Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my Would You Read It Challenge video for April 2023. And specifically, I am looking at the Booktube Prize 2019 Octafinals Group G. So this is a bit of a mouthful of this uh, project I've been doing for the past several months, but uh, it started with the Would You Read It Challenge video that was uh, brought to Booktube by Etu Brody, and I'll have a link down below. And the point was to choose uh, a variety of books from whatever parameters you'd like uh, and share the first sentence with your audience and then ask them which book would you like to continue reading. And I've moved from, you know, a sentence to a paragraph to sometimes a full page. I, am, I have been a little inconsistent myself. In this video, I'll just be looking, I think, at the first paragraph or so of the books in contention. And specifically, I've been using the Booktube Prize as my template. So <laughs> there's this whole uh, challenge uh, every year to read every book on the uh, long lists. Uh, and uh, each uh, division long list is 48 books. And I'm never going to do that. But now at least I've given each every book a chance. <laughs> or, you know, the start of a chance. <laughs> Uh, and anyway, I just love the Booktube Prize, which uh, I should explain now is uh, something that was brought to Booktube by uh, Robert at Barter Hordes. And it's really not just for Booktubers, it's for the literary Booktornet to judge the best in literary fiction and nonfiction published uh, the year before the current one uh, in the U.S. We are currently in the middle of the 2023 season, judging 2022 uh, books. Uh, we're in the second of the four rounds, the quarterfinals, and I can't talk about any of the books I'm judging for that as an official judge, because uh, that's part of the rules, but uh, I can go back to yesteryear and talk about those books. So yes, uh, each group uh, has uh, six books on the ballot, and the octafinals were the first uh, round where, you know, it's 48 books uh, in contention, uh, and yeah. I've only read one of these books fully, uh, and I actually discussed it in a video uh, alongside two other Booktube Prize books uh, that I'll link below. I wasn't an official judge in 2019, uh, but uh, I was happily uh, doing a little bit from the sidelines. Uh, and now I'm happy to do a little more from the sidelines. Uh, yeah, I'll just be sharing the first paragraph or two and then sharing the titles and finally giving my thoughts on the six books. So, without further ado, starting with book number one. I have lived many lives inside this body. I have lived many lives before they put me in this body. I will live many lives when they take me out of it. We. The first time our mother came for us, we screamed. We were three, and she was a snake, coiled up on the tile of the bathroom, waiting. But we had spent the last few years believing our body, thinking that our mother was someone different, a thin human with rouged cheekbones and large bottle-end glasses. And so we screamed. The demarcations are not that clear when you're new. There was a time before we had a body, when it was still building itself cell by cell inside the thin woman, meticulously producing organs, making systems. We used to flit in and out to see how the fetus was doing, whistling through the water as it floated in and harmonizing with the songs the thin woman sang, Catholic hymns from her family, their bodies stored as ashes in the walls of a cathedral in Kuala Lumpur. It amused us to distort the chanting rhythm of the music, to twist it around the fetus until it kicked in glee. Sometimes we left the thin woman's body to float behind her and explore the house she kept, following her through the shell blue walls, watching her as she pressed dough into rounds and chapatis bubbled under her hands. And that was from Freshwater by Akweke Emeze. Book Two. If she wanted to continue, Gabessa first had to rid the road of a slow-moving snake. Greenish-brown with golden eyes, as difficult to gaze upon as the sun, and the snake's body was no different in color than the woods it had crawled from. And it seemed to Gabessa that the surrounding bushes were jealous of her departure, so they extended their toes to block her path. Orange dust stained the belly of the snake, which writhed as it hissed, and Gabessa pointed a five-foot stick in its direction. The snake was not afraid of her or of the stick, and it raised its head and advanced. And that was from She Would Be King by Wyetu Moore. 
Book Three. Prologue. Lael tries not to look up. He reaches out to take the piece of paper being handed to him. He must transfer the five digits onto the girl who held it. There is already a number there, but it has faded. He pushes the needle into her left arm, making a three, trying to be gentle. Blood oozes, but the needle hasn't gone in deep enough, and he has to trace the number again. She doesn't flinch at the pain Lael knows he's inflicting. They've been warned. Say nothing, do nothing. He wipes away the blood and rubs green ink into the wound. And that was from The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. Book four, Falling House. The simplest thing would be to tear it down, the man said. The house is in shambles. She took this news as a blood rush to the ears, a roar of peasant ancestors with rocks in their fists facing the evictor. But this man was a contractor. Willa had called him here and she could send him away. She waited out her panic while he stood looking at her shambles, appearing to nurse some satisfaction from his diagnosis. She picked out words. It's not a living thing. You don't just pronounce it dead. Anything that goes wrong with a structure can be replaced with another structure. Am I right? And that was from Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. Book five. Orlando Zhang. The end of Ori's world began with a deer. He went outside to where the trees began to check the game trap, followed the tripwire, pushed away the leaves, uncovered the hidden metal cage, empty. The air had already turned his hands red with cold before he'd scattered the dried twigs back into place with the nose of his shotgun. The last time there had been anything snared inside had been two weeks ago, at least. Pale orange bruised into gray around the edges of the horizon, a gangrious dawn. He and his wife, Max, were down to just one meal now that it was too cold to catch anything. A jar of spaghetti sauce he'd found at the last time he'd broken into an abandoned house in western Arlington. There was no denying it any longer. Ori would have to go to the city again to scavenge for food. Go or starve. And that was from The Book of M by Peng Shepherd. And finally, Book 6. November 2, 2012. The big day. They were married on the Day of the Dead, El Dia de los Muertos, which no one gave much thought to in all the months of planning, until the bride's deceased father-in-law showed up in the car following the ceremony. He manifested behind the wheel, then stretched his arm over the back of the passenger seat as he turned to face Martin and Isabel. Beautiful ceremony, mijo, he said. And that was from Everyone Knows You Go Home by Natalia Sylvester. Okay, well, I feel like this is a lesson to me that uh, beginnings aren't always truthful or you can't judge a book by the beginning entirely because I feel like out of the six of these, the one that still intrigues me the most is from the book I actually read, which was the book of M. I just love how it's like... I guess, you know, it's so high stakes to the end of the world, and obviously, you know, they're scavenging for food, but it's, I don't know, so quiet as well. I don't know, you know, it's, I, I read it and I was intrigued by it for the Station Eleven vibes, but I ultimately just didn't jive with the concept and the fantastical nature of uh, losing shadows, and there was all sorts of other surreal stuff that happened in this book that didn't jive with me, and this might be a little bit of a bias for me, uh, also when it comes to Freshwater by A Quick Amese, the first book. Uh, I mean, I've only read these first couple of paragraphs, uh, and I realize that uh, they are um, drawing from uh, a different uh, heritage and culture that uh, takes this sort of surreal stuff uh, as, uh, you know, much more seriously and than Western culture often does. And But for me, I mean... You know, it's interesting to think about, I suppose, uh, you know, the idea of, a, of some sort of birth where there's a fetus and a soul and that sort of stuff. But I can't deny that I'm mostly interested in fiction for more traditional character studies. Uh, so this one didn't grab me as much. I had a little trouble reading it even. Uh, the second, uh, you know, segment too, I guess, you know, mostly it's a very detailed, interesting description. And there is that tension of, you know, tr uh, the main character trying to, you know, fend off a snake and it doesn't seem to work. Uh, uh, it's, I guess it, it could be an intriguing start of something, you know, I, you know, be 
more intrigued by more meat on the bones, more, you know, character interaction stuff, but, you know, certainly for a uh, opening descriptive image, I suppose that's pretty enticing. Uh, and then we have the Barbara Kingsolver. I'm thinking a lot about Barbara Kingsolver because her most recent book is currently uh, in contention for the Booktube Prize, and I'm pretty sure I want to read it anyway. Uh, and this one, I feel like I liked it better as I was typing out the notes uh, than when I was reading it, but honestly, I, I feel like it's really right up the alley of what I've been talking about. It's quite obviously a character study <laughs> and uh, a sort of a traditional Western style character study of this woman talking to um, a contractor and she's obviously feeling defensive about her home and so that comes into, you know, their interaction, so there's that emotional terseness, but it, all, it also just, I, I appreciate scenes, I guess, maybe that are a little less externally dramatic. I mean, I guess it's a little externally dramatic. Like, what happens, I guess, uh, if she's evicted? Uh, although this doesn't seem to be an evictor, although the fact that she has that in the back of her mind might say something. But obviously, this scene is a lot more quiet, and I like that. Um, and I guess that also brings me to <laughs> uh, everyone knows you go home which is the one i think i remembered the least out of these six like it stayed the least in my memory of books that came out in 2018 uh and again i guess it's one of those things where you know it obviously gets you immediately because um uh, in a realist story there wouldn't be a dead ancestor who comes to visit you in your car even if it is uh, <laughs> dia de los muertos or anything like that but in this obviously there's a uh um, a magical realist or a fabulous element, something like that. And it is kind of amusing, obviously, the language is very clever about how it comes together. And like, you start thinking, oh, it's about a marriage. And then like, you know, <laughs> the dead father-in-law has something to say about it. So that's kind of cute. Uh, so far, it doesn't seem too spooky, but uh, you know, I don't know the reaction from <laughs> the uh, couple yet. Uh, that's not really to say that I'll definitely go ahead and read this book because I have so much to read as it is. And uh, maybe if I had to pick one other book out of uh, this six, it might be the Barbara King Solver because I feel like I should be reading more of her. But maybe I'll start with uh, her most recent book <laughs> anyway. So basically, I have enough on my plate. But uh, yeah, this was an interesting uh, list. None of these made it like into the finals or anything. Seems like there was a little bit of a... Uh, uh, slant towards some sort of fabulism in a few of these at least uh, so you know the I think you know the way the algorithm uh, grouped books together was random but it's interesting to find the themes in them so that's what I got out of all of these I'd be curious to hear your thoughts future Rachel here where I'm realizing and now that uh, through all of this ramble I haven't talked about uh, the tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris <laughs> Perhaps that is apropos uh, that I forgot about that book because uh, I tend to be a bit iffy on Holocaust books anyway. Uh, and I probably would not, uh, in normal circumstances, go ahead to continue to read this one. <laughs> And that about covers it for me now. Uh, I will also leave information about the booktube prize down below and the Goodreads links for the six books I talked about and also the review of the Book of M that I wrote. You can uh, find me back on this channel in the next couple of days to talk about uh, recent reading that hopefully I'm finishing uh, for my next Am reading video of uh, April, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.